Hello, and welcome back to What The Fest. You know what today is? It's day 15, and that means we're halfway done! Oh man, it's been quite a journey so far, but we still have a ways to go. Today I'm going to do my uh, video on iodine. I long ago promised that I would do one on iodine, and today, here it is. So, we've already talked about fluoride. Um, iodine is also a halogen. If you look at the periodic table... There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium... You'll notice fluoride, um, chloride, bromide, and iodide. Now, three of these are toxins in your body, and one of them is an essential uh, mineral that your body needs for several functions, and that is iodide. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention in my fluoride video is that um, fluoride actually reduces IQ, particularly in the very young. Um, that's, it just kind of slipped my mind to include that. Iodine on the other hand, actually has been shown to raise IQs. Back in the day, we included iodine in bread. Iodine was actually recognized as um, an essential uh, nutrient in the early 1900s when uh, the so-called goiter belt uh, was developing. Um, a lot of people in some states like uh, Michigan and Ohio and in that area were developing goiters. They found that the reason for this was because uh, these people were not getting enough iodide. This is when we began creating iodized salt to help treat this. So once upon a time we lived in uh, a uh, better world, maybe? <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily true, but... Um, anyway, we put iodine in bread. Um, you could make a case that um, people should never be messing with your food and putting stuff into it, but... At least at this time, they were putting in something that uh, we actually do need in our diet, and most people aren't getting. And then, fast forward uh, not too much longer, and they switched um, iodide out with bromide. Um, now bread is all brom brom brominated, <laughs> and um, soft drinks are too, soda. Um, bromide is included in... Um, most flour products because they claim it's a natural uh, pesticide. It's another toxin to the human body just like fluoride. Now every halogen compete for receptor sites within your body um, because they're all very similar. The key exception being that three of them are very bad for you and will cause disease as they accumulate um, and several hardships. Whereas iodine will um, improve IQ, improve cell function, improve your immune system function, um, reduce cysts, and um, it has just a whole host of benefits. There's an increasing epidemic of not getting enough iodine in our diets, and the reason for that is that soils are completely, are essentially completely um, depleted of iodine these days. Um, and the only way you're really going to get it in your diet is if you happen to live on a coast and eat tons and tons of seafood because you can really only find it in seaweed and kelp and other sea vegetation. So, hmm. what happens when um, your body is flooded with one of the toxic halogens instead of iodine? Well. First of all, you'll, your thyroid is going to grab onto those because there's an abundance in your body and you'll accumulate it in your thyroid. And your thyroid is the main place where halogens are stored, but really any glandular uh, part of the body. So here we're talking about the breasts, um, the ovary, the prostate gland. Um, these are the places where um, halogens are stored. If your body's storing toxic halogens, as most of ours are, unfortunately, well, you you could develop a goiter, but um, that's not the only uh, thing you're going to experience. A lack of iodine causes cystic disease, so you're going to see things like polycystic breast disease, polycystic ovarian disease, um, prostate cancer, 
any of your glandular tissue um, really becomes at an increased risk of cancer um, when you lack iodine. Another thing, um, iodine does help more or less whatever you have in the greatest abundance is what your body will hold and the rest will be um, expelled through your urine. Iodine also helps um, detoxify your... it's a great natural um, detoxifier. It helps get rid of heavy metals such as mercury and lead that are in the body as well as uh, the the toxic halogens. Um, it can also help to decalcify your pineal gland and um, improve that function as well as your pituitary gland function as well. So about 30 million American men and 50 million American women are what's known as clinically uh, suffer from clinical hypothyroidism, which is an underperforming thyroid, which is a key sign that you're not getting enough iodine. And this number is um, actually, believe it or not, a very underrepresentative. Some estimates are that about 75% of the world is um, deficient in iodine. Now, some symptoms that you may be uh, experiencing if you are um, suffering from a low level of iodine is um, cold hands and feet, um, dry skin, brain fog, fatigue, and puffiness around the eyes. <laughs> Another sign if you're a woman during your uh, menstrual period, if you have um, breast tenderness, that's a very key sign that you might be lacking in iodine. So I think that's about going to cover it on iodine. Um, just to sum up, it is a very important mineral uh, nutrient for your body. Most people are not getting enough of it. I would recommend looking into a good uh, supplement or some way to get it into your body. Um, iodized salt really isn't that great because it's not a very absorbable form. A lot of the uh, iodine supplements you're going to look at are going to be alcohol-based. These aren't necessarily the best kind, um, although they are probably the most common. I would recommend looking into uh, nascent iodine. Um, this is the most easily absorbable form for your body. If you can, uh, getting it um, in a vegetable uh, base rather than an alcohol base, um, I believe is preferable. So that's all I wanted to say. Halfway done with this fast, but let's not get too teary-eyed yet because there's still quite a ways to go. So thank you for watching and check back next time, my friends.